I've always been interested in everybody eats and what they do and now I'm going to be whacking my hips on every corner of every bench in that, in that kitchen. I am also nervous about cooking with protein again, like cooking with meat. Hopefully those skills just come back. <laughs> Everybody Eats is an organisation combating food waste, food poverty and social isolation. Three nights a week, Everybody Eats offers a three-course meal from LTD in Wellington, using donated food that would be going to landfill, all for a Quahart donation. Food donations are collected first thing in the morning, before head chef Al Robbins creates a menu for that night with help from volunteers. This year for the Wellington on a Plate Festival, Everybody Eats is welcoming five next-generation chefs from around the capital. Each week, one chef will create a menu from donated food they get on the day, before a panel of judges crown a winner at the end of the festival. I'm Madison Grace and I'm the sous chef here at Hillside Kitchen and Cellar. I started when I was in high school, I was 13, um, and I just got into a small RSA in the small town where I'm from uh, and just started doing kitchen handwork to just kind of figure out my way around the kitchen. Um, I knew quite young that I wanted to be a chef, so I just got in there straight away and tried to figure it out. Um, and it was a lot different to what it is now. So it was a bit intense, but <laughs> it was fun. I went from there, did some training at Welltech in Wellington, um, and then just kind of floated my way through Wellington until I found someone who taught me all the stuff that I value right now. Went from there just kind of moving my way up, I suppose, um, until here. Head judge and fellow Wellington chef Max Gordy is the mastermind behind the competition, having previously worked for Everybody Eats. So how did Madison get involved? We've been talking a bit about food and he got in touch with me and kind of just reached out and asked me if I wanted to be a part of it. Um, and it sounded great, so I was like, yeah, okay, great, cool, I'll do that. <laughs> and I've always been interested in Everybody Eats and what they do. Um, everything with the Kai Bosch Foundation I think is really awesome um, and it kind of makes sense working here at Hillside where we focus on everything being sustainable and trying to bring our wastage down and we have our own farm and all that kind of stuff so it's like it falls in line with the things that I value um, so it just kind of seemed like a bit of a no-brainer to be honest. <laughs> What does Madison find the most exciting about the event? The people that they bring in. Um, that's what hospitality has always been about for me, is bringing people together. So hopefully I can do that through um, the food that I cook on the night. Um, and also just working with the chefs that are awesome enough to volunteer their time um, to such an awesome cause as well. So I think it, it, the whole thing is going to be an awesome experience. I think all of the chefs that are doing it are very talented. Working at Hillside we change our menu based on whatever Asher brings in so I think that part I might be somewhat okay with, just coming up with some cool things on the day. Anything she's nervous about? Not knowing the space. That's the thing. I've wanted to get into Everybody Eats for a while and do some volunteer work, but we all know how, um, how the industry is at the moment, so it, we've all been fairly busy. Um, but not knowing the kitchen environment is going to be the main thing for me. I know I'm going to be whacking my hips on every corner of every bench in that, in that kitchen. I think going into any space like where you don't know your environment, you can't work as quickly and as efficiently as you would in the kitchen that you're comfortable in. Hopefully once I figure out the space it'll be okay, but I'm nervous about that. I'm nervous about the competition. The people I'm competing against are excellent chefs um, who <laughs> probably have never even heard my name before, but I've heard all of theirs and I'm really excited to be against them um, and beside them at the same time. I am also nervous about cooking with protein again, like cooking with meat, because Oh, this is a vegetarian restaurant, so I've been a little bit out of it for a little while. Um, but hopefully those skills just come back. <laughs> and what does Madison feel she can bring to Everybody Eats? Thinking quick on my feet, that's one thing I know how to do. So I just hope that through my passion for food and my passion for cooking and hospitality or manakitanga, I can bring people together and they can have just a really awesome night together, enjoy, talk about the food, inspire that kind of conversation about different things. I want to go foraging beforehand as well and hopefully bring some of that into my cooking. Um, I'm guessing a couple of the other chefs will have the same kind of tricks up their sleeves a little bit as well, so it's just going to be really cool to see how my experience 
or the things that I've done in my career will play into one night. What does the phrase everybody eats mean to her? It means everybody eats. It means nobody goes hungry. And that is really, really important. Um, not wasting products um, and protecting the environment. So, yeah, just all the good things, really. <laughs> We've heard from Everybody Eats head chef Al Robbins and restaurant manager Jack Rainey across the past four episodes. So what does Everybody Eats mean to them? It means just that. Um, everybody eats, everybody has to eat. Um, and here at Everybody Eats, everybody can eat. Why can't we all eat well? <laughs> we, have, we have enough Surplus food, enough yeah. surplus food for everybody to eat 100%. with dignity and respect and um, I mean yeah. you know there's no there's no better way to unite people than through food so everybody wins and everybody eats <laughs> all of the chefs have the same main course protein oyster cut lamb shoulder as for the rest of the ingredients that will be down to the day's donations Similar to TAC last episode, Madison has a very green selection to work with. Baby zucchini, silver beet, spring onion, avocado, Brussels sprouts, broccoli, cauliflower, turnips, pumpkin, mushrooms and carrots. Now she's had a chance to see her ingredients, how is the last head chef feeling? I'm feeling good. I'm feeling excited, a little bit nervous, as I should be. Um, but yeah, no, I'm really excited to just get into it and start prepping some stuff now. And what about working with meat again? Still nervous, to be honest. <laughs> I've been, I've bought a couple of lamb shoulders and I did some deboning to kind of just get back into the swing of it. Did one last night and the one I had last night was a little bit more complicated. It had all the, all the things on it. So yeah, I think I'm, I'm excited to get it done and then just kind of see how it goes. So, what's on the menu? At this stage, things can change, you never know. Um, for the entree, we have an avocado puree using the avos that have been donated with the cilantro and some preserved lemon. Um, then we have a little bit of fresh crudité on top, keeping it nice for that uh, opening course with a bit of radish, yellow yams and turnips, garnished with a bit of fresh spring onion and a fennel oil. For the main, We'll have a couple of different options so we can keep our vegetarian separate. So we'll be doing the Lumino lamb shoulder but we'll be deboning it. Um, and then we'll do a broccoli puree using up all the bits and pieces that kind of go together to stretch that out. Um, with a bit of the onion wheat that I foraged yesterday. Um, and then we'll be doing a stuffed mushroom for our vegetarian, vegan and gluten free version with the veg garnish being the same between both, so some brussels and silver beet. Then for the dessert, we're looking at doing a carrot and pumpkin spice cake with a kawakawa drizzle, and we're looking at citrus for the garnish as well. After a quick brief, Madison wastes no time setting up her volunteers for prep shift. Midday, prep begins. As always, a new group of volunteers arrive after prep shift, ready for service and front of house.
The judges arrive early into service, eager to try the final menu. Eighty-one people are served in the first 30 minutes, just under half the total amount who will be served tonight. Let's check in with our head chef at the midway point. How's she feeling? Real, real good. <laughs> yeah, no, it's going really, really well. I'm really happy with how everything's looking. Everybody seems to be really happy and the vibe out there is just, it's great. So yeah, it's exactly what I wanted to just see people coming together and eating the food together and whatnot. Yeah, it's great. It looks good, tastes good, smells great. Um, so yeah, heaps of people just, they run like a well-oiled machine as well. So these guys are just helping us get that food out really quickly as well. Across the past five weeks, these five chefs have praised the work of the Everybody Eats volunteers. We have heard stories from many who dine here. Now, it's time to hear from those who make it all possible. It's really refreshing to see the, the best of the best of people with no expectation. Yeah. You know, they're just here out of the goodness of their heart. Often they've done a full day's work and then they come here and wash dishes for two and a half hours, yeah. three hours, yeah. which is just unbelievable. Courtney has been volunteering for about a year after seeing a post on Facebook. I've met uh, through Everybody Eats some of like some of my closest friends now and um, yeah just the people that you get to interact with each shift that you come on um, is really special and people that you might not come across you know day to day but you can be in the space together and yeah just kind of share this kind of aroha going around um, so that's really nice and that's why I volunteer. Sasha has done over 100 volunteering shifts, which earns a custom named t-shirt. For me it's become more about the social element and the way that this place brings respect and dignity to the guests that come to dine here. It's not just a here's your food, hi bye situation, which I think so many people appreciate. I just absolutely would not have met the diversity of people here and connected with them on like a meaningful level rather than just a kind of surface level. Both Courtney and Sasha have made emotional memories across their time with Everybody Eats. There was a regular guest that, you know, I kind of see him every every Tuesday or every second Tuesday, and he came over to me and he said, oh, um, do you guys control the music? And I was like, oh, yeah, we do. Like, do you have a song request? And he was like, yeah, like, um, could you play Hey Jude by the Beatles? And I was like, oh, of course I can. Popped on Hey Jude, and he just kind of put his arms out to say, like, Come and, come and dance with me. And so I slow danced with this regular guest and it was so, it was really beautiful. And then everybody around the restaurant was just kind of singing Hey Jude as we were spinning around. And he turned out to be actually a really good dancer and I have two Both left feet. Um, yeah. So I was kind of just doing my own thing. Um, but yeah, that was um, that was probably one of the like highlights throughout throughout my time here, just to, yeah, just to see that community and that love going around was, was really lovely. One of our regulars, she rocked up at the door, but she had her nails done and I noticed immediately and I was like, I see your nails. And she, she whispered to me and she was like, it's my birthday. And I knew that she would want some kind of appreciation or some special mention. So when it came to dessert time, Elle in the kitchen does a great job of working on a candle and we all crowded around the candle. Um, we sung happy birthday, we slowly walked over to her and she literally like teared up. She was, she gave a wee speech as well, which was really special. Oh, like everyone so in the room quietened down and she gave a speech and she came and spoke to us afterwards and said that no one's really had that special celebration for her, even on that level. And it was with people that she knew because she was familiar with the space and she'd connected with us. And it was like a family celebration for her, which is really special because a lot of people don't have that 
and maybe they find elements of that here. So that was heartwarming. Ben began volunteering in the kitchen as a result of his interest in the restaurant industry. I kind of knew deep down that was not something I could do professionally, but I was still really interested. So when I found out about this, the opportunity to work in a commercial kitchen with chefs, I just thought, oh, that sounds like me. And it's, it's been great. Lauren found Everybody Eats after wanting to volunteer with humans, following a stint overseas volunteering with animals. I decided so many years in hospital and customer service and I would love to be a part of something especially with food wastage. I tend to eat anything and everything whether it's been on the floor or not so I thought why not be part of a group that does that as well and yes yeah, been a, I've been here now nearly a year so and I love it. Yeah. Both Ben and Lauren have volunteered in the kitchen and front of house respectively during every one of these guest chef nights. So what have they noticed that's been different over the past five weeks? Just seeing the different approaches people have, it's so different to how they cook normally in their um, professional lives and seeing them deal with it and you know, some of them have been a little bit stressy and uh, early on but have you know just pulled without fail all five just pulled together the most incredible meals. The clientele that's come in as well with Wellington on a plate like our usual regulars uh, every weekly people we've had so many new people come and people that have never been here before or didn't understand or didn't think that they could come and then for the local and the regular guests that come every week they have not gone to any of these people's restaurants before or anything like that so for them it's been great because they get to try new stuff try new styles and yeah get to be part of this Wellington on a plate and everything yeah it's really cool and for the question we have asked all of our chefs what does the phrase everybody eats mean to these volunteers no matter who you are no matter what you do where you've come from you can you can come into this space into this community and you you can be here and you can just just enjoy a really well done, well cooked meal and who doesn't love bonding, bonding over some food. You see these tables and there's mostly people that haven't talked to each other before and they're, yeah, they're, they're brought together by a really beautiful hot plate of food and yeah, everybody can just hang out and everybody can eat. I just have to repeat the aspects around respect and dignity. Being inside, warm, especially on a cold wintry night, being able to come into a safe space where Someone's smiling at you and actually giving you the time of day. Everyone comes here for different reasons, but they know that they're coming to a safe space. They're getting fed. Everyone deserves to get fed. Food is an important life of people's lives, um, an important part of people's lives. Democratising access to great, great food that you know is so expensive to eat at fancy restaurants, but that there's a commitment to just making that experience more accessible to, to more people and just it's just less kind of conceited and, and a lot of the guest chefs were really into that. You know, that, that was that was super cool. Everybody eats, everybody's happy. Yeah. Service wraps up for the final time just after 8 pm, a time when all the volunteers can enjoy the night's menu. Let's check in with our head judge for the last time. This week was really cool, like, I feel, feel like um, there was a lot more, like, use of different vegetables in different ways, like, the crudités to start was really cool, um, had a lot of freshness, like, raw yams is such, like, a cool ingredient to use, and, like, like educating the people that you don't have to cook them, because I feel like a lot of people don't like yams, because you cook them to shit, and, uh, yeah, they taste like garbage, but cooking them raw is just, like, such a nice little hint of acidity, and it works so well for that entree, it was real cool. What's been his favourite thing to see over the past five weeks? Seeing each chef just like happy to be in the kitchen and like inspiring so many others because they get to bring a, a few of their friends into the kitchen and those friends just meet other people from different communities and they and it's all just going to a really good cause and it's just really cool to see that like passion being displayed. How does the head chef feel? Relieved <laughs> and also just really happy like like I said like before, these guys are all just amazing. They've made it a dream. They've made it so smooth for me. And I've just been able to just chill and watch it all kind of unfold after all the work of the day. So it's just really nice to finally kind of do it and see that I can do it as well, which is awesome. And what's been her most memorable moment? The uh, reactions from the food is like my favorite part because it's like then you get to find out if you actually did well or not. Um, so yeah, the, the feedback has been pretty pretty good and I'm I'm just happy that people have been enjoying it 
and it was also really awesome to see so many people coming through from different places and also people that I know coming through, people I don't know coming through. Uh, hearing that there was a queue, I was like, well, that's normal for everybody. <laughs> but I was like, I'll just, you know, <laughs> take that. <laughs> Two weeks after our final chef helmed the Everybody Eats Kitchen, Wellington's hospitality community come together for the Wellington Hospitality Awards to celebrate the industry, including the winner of this Wellington on a Plate event. Head judge Max Gordy takes the stage to announce the winner. I'm really stoked to give this individual, he did a great job, um, he let it go. Uh, Tom, you took it out man. As time comes to an end on this Wellington on a Plate event, we sit down again with Everybody Eats head chef Al Robbins and restaurant manager Jack Rainey to find out their thoughts on how they think it all went. It's gone way better than... Yeah. Way better than... Yeah. I mean, we didn't know what we are going into, but I mean, it's blowing all no. expectations out of the water. The response from everyone, from the guests, from the volunteers and from the chefs and their teams has been um, so positive. I feel like everyone's had such a good experience. This is a huge festival in the city and it's a very important festival for the city and to have an event that is accessible to everyone yeah. I think has been really special yeah. and I think something that we're really proud of. Yeah. And the response from the guests has been equally positive. Yeah. On the Tuesdays we would still get quite, um, still a very diverse um, group of guests and still a lot of people who maybe had come on the Monday night and had experienced it for the first time coming back in on the mm. Tuesday. It has been really interesting seeing a lot of these paying guests come and be seated amongst a lot of Wellington's vulnerable community and strike up conversation and have chats. So I think it's probably helped remove a lot of the stigma around previous associations with what this place might have meant to them. Does the pier have any highlights over the busy month? I'm always really overwhelmed with the support of our volunteers and really make, it just humbles me massively to see what they give to us and that has been more on show than it ever has before. Yeah. Like one of them was saying tonight that she missed a week a while back and she felt her week was empty. When we get to the end of the day and we've sold pretty much sold out yeah, the food yeah. and we tell the chefs what numbers they've done and how many people they've fed and give them feedback and yeah. often very positive feedback about their food. See them digest the experience. I think that's always really, yeah. really special because they come through it and they see all the stuff and they do all the thing. But they have taken this food that would have been thrown away and they've fed, you know, 200, 200 people with it. Yeah. And that's, it's, it is really special to see yeah. them realise what we get to do every day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and any final message for the chefs? If they see this, that we're incredibly grateful to them for, yeah. for doing this and being part of um, Everybody Eats for a night. Especially this month, when <laughs> it is the busiest month of the year. Um, it's particularly, yeah. you know, we are particularly grateful. Yeah. The chefs have really embodied what we do and really, mm. really taken it on board, which has been um, really special.